I have been roasted about this in the past, that I waste money buying stuff that I never use. And one of those things that people have roasted me for is this massive f***ing whiteboard. There we go. So I bought this like classroom size whiteboard and I was like, I'm going to use this all the time. I never use it, I'll be honest. It probably was a waste of money. Um, okay, let's, let's compile our wish list for this panel. So the panel, the point of it is to discuss rank 2.0. Because, shockingly, Ubisoft did a terrible job of explaining Rank 2.0, so now no one understands how it works. Explain Hidden MMR. Other wishlist changes. Will this happen? Probably not, because Ubisoft refuses to acknowledge uh, when they've done anything wrong. So I, I hope that they try to explain how 2.0 is better than 1.0. Benefits of 2.0? That's a good one. Oh, it is on Titanium Rolo's channel. Not to try to say anything bad, but I feel like it's not going to reach the audience they hope it reaches by having on her channel. They should have put it on both that and the Ubisoft channel. Uh, you're kind of in my world, so... Okay, so they just content, started it without uh, even... Everything that you'll experience, whether it's pausing, the economy so or the progression. It's just um, going. The matchmaking, cross-progression, etc. All that kind of stuff kind of falls under me. Awesome. That is, that is good to know. And for those who... Haven't been here before. I'm Titanium Rolo. Uh, I'm a Siege content creator. I stream. I make videos. And uh, yeah, I, it's really I quiet. Siege, basically, that, <laughs> that's my introduction. <laughs> Love it. I can so, barely hear them. I guess a good place guys, it's max volume. Conversation as rank 2.0. I appreciate it has. Uh, it's it's like some people absolutely love it. Some people. I also have already doubled the volume. Um, so I guess for you guys, it was a. I imagine it was a hard decision to go from ranked 1.0 to 2.0. Like it wasn't a decision I assumed that was like taken lightly and there was a lot of work put into it. So with that in mind, have you seen an increase in the numbers of players who play ranked and the number of games played a season? Yeah, so you're right. So the ranked playlist is a very important playlist in Siege. It's it's by far our most important playlist. And yes, we've seen a, a major, major increase in terms of the, the players who are playing ranked. So in rank 2.0 today, we have 45% of our players that play ranked every season. Uh, compare that to ranked 1.0, it was only 35%. So that's almost a third uh, increase. Um, not only that, so yes, more players are playing ranked, but also they're playing way more than they used to. Uh, we did, used to have placement matches in ranked 1.0, and there would be a, a very large population of our that would come in every season, play their placement matches, get whatever position they ended up, them up, and then they would uh, leave and likely likely come back next season. We would hope, um, but now we see them playing longer. They they stick within ranked longer. It takes them uh, longer to get to say gold, for example. They uh, on average takes about 50 matches for a median goal to to reach uh, that rank, yeah, and then that bleeds into TikTok other playlists as well. So that means more people in quick match, more people in standard. Um, as people are playing longer per season, um, then all playlists benefit from that, but especially ranked. Okay, awesome. And I guess I definitely am one of those players. I can't lie. I'm ranked 1.0. I used to play my 10 placements, place in diamond, and then not play again. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> It was too stressful. <laughs> yeah, but also you risk dropping, right? Like that's that's how it happened, right? So you'd, you'd place, you'd say, in your case, you'd get diamond, and then maybe you'd want to get to champion, but maybe you just have an off season and drop from there. So it's it's not it wasn't always the best feeling, especially for... A lot of players that were positioning say they ended up in gold and then they would just drop to bronze for the rest of the season. And that's not a very welcoming experience. I wonder if that's true. I wonder if we look up her stats if she actually options. used to never play okay, ranked so, and now plays it a bunch. And yeah, I, I fully I'm appreciate check. that as well. Because I guess by playing your placements, you obviously couldn't place champ. So when I hit diamond, I was like, well, the next thing is champ. And I... I'm, I wasn't a champ, so I was like, yeah, I'm done. So that, that I'm not trying sense. to call her out, so but I'm just wondering if that's like a scripted line. questions I've had uh, in the comments when I've asked for questions for this um, is why was the decision made to have the skill side of the MMR hidden? So uh, skill is just a like the MMR. The, the 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 old elo that we would display in ranked 1.0 was a matchmaking value that you would be matchmade on 
Um, but with rank 2.0, the reason why we did want to separate the rank and the, the MMR itself is that we knew we could do a lot with matchmaking in terms of improvements. Um, and I'd love to talk about that today. Um, but it, just that number is not the whole story. And I think that one thing I, I'd like to talk about during this time is what we're going to be doing uh, as well in the future and how we want to improve that. Um, but by separating rank and a skill, uh, it had two two benefits. One is that we get to work on the actual matchmaking and try to improve it and, and try to do that in a way that that uh, okay. allowed for the best quality of matches, which the number itself did not necessarily uh, tell you the whole story. And the other one was adding that sense of progression. So instead of everybody, you know, doing their 10 placements and then just kind of ending up where they ended up in the community, uh, allowing people to kind of start uh, at the, say, Copper 5 and work their way up to where they belong in the community. Okay, so I assume from this conversation that the hidden MMR, will that remain hidden in the future? We currently don't have plans to re like bring back the MMR value as is, uh, oh. that skill value. But one thing that's, that is true in rank 2.0 is that once the rank and the skill get on top of each other, so with like your rank has now kind of caught up with your skill, you start to see that you get the same amount of points for a victory as a loss. And so you kind of bounce in between there. So if I'm getting say plus 20 for a win and minus 20 for a loss, like you've converged is what we call it. That's your conversions where your rank terrible. and your skill have kind of met each other. So there's probably op options and opportunities for us to try to make that uh, a lot better. And you know, where you're going to converge or, or how far away from, from converging you are, or where do we think you're going to end up? But just that number itself, it's not it's not the whole story because that number is constantly evolving. Like that that's that, not true. that uh, skill value. It only if you're changes losing, at, it's dropping, after the season's over. And ultimately, it's meaning that you can't go as far within the ranked ladder uh, as you uh, as you maybe previously could before that loss. But and as you're winning, it also goes about. So maybe there maybe there's something we can do with the the idea of conversions, kind of showing you a little bit about you know moving forward or moving ahead and where your potential ends up or dropping downwards if you're if you're going on a losing streak. Um, so we think more about it as, you know, kind of bringing that to the forefront rather than just, you know, bringing back the number. Okay. Um, so I guess with that in mind, how can players know that they're improving with their rank? If they can't see they can't. their skill level physically, how can they tell if they're improving from season to season? So ultimately getting further in the ranks is the best way to do that. Um, another great way to do that is that if you notice when that that moment happens where you're kind of evening out between a win and a loss, that's ultimately where your skill is. So if say that happened to you on gold three on one season, then next season it's happening on gold one. Those matches that you Bro, had done- You have to wait a whole season to go two ranks. Up to gold one, and that the wins, I, I would imagine that that pushed you from say gold three to gold one, were the reason why your skill started to pull away and pull up into the upper ranks. So if you start to see that your your rank points are evening out at gold three, and then next season it's gold one, that means that your your skill has improved. Okay, sure, that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, that that is definitely a way. I, I guess, feel like that they, that they said nothing to us skill there. Skill has definitely improved, and the same as if they also I'm gonna their this for drop off is earlier, then they've obviously gotten worse in theory um yes so i also know that one of the biggest questions i think i get in like nearly every video that i make is will there be a ranked 3.0 or are there any plans for that in the future yes yeah, so we're not currently looking at it as a ranked 3.0 instead we're just looking at how can we improve from one season to the next um i mentioned in the siege intel videos like one of the the uh, improvements we've done so far is, you know, adding the headgears uh, this year uh, and, and both uh, year nine season one and year nine season two, you're, those, there's ranked headgears that you can get on when you reach gold one. These are the little improvements that we're going to be doing. They act like that's a whole new thing with rank 2.0. They could have done that with rank 1.0. And, and even into year 10. You didn't need to change um, hidden MMR. We're just going to be continuously to improving the ranked playlist. And we see it more as like, uh, how do we continue to improve it? How do we uh, get it better? Does it mean UX improvements? Does it mean matchmaking improvements? But we're not kind of holding on to a bunch of fixes and then kind of saying, hey, this is rank 3.0. Instead, we just like to naturally involve it and try to make it as best it can be. Okay. So I guess following on from where you said about uh, like the headgears that come, I believe that it's gold one this season. Gold one, yeah. And I think I, 
assume it's gold one next season. It will be, yeah. Is it always going to be gold one or will that change over time? For now, we're, we're leaving at gold one. And um, actually, this could be a good time. I know I uh, like we talked about displaying the uh, hidden MMR curve. So we're happy to show that uh, today. So in our designer notes, we shared the rank. I, mean, I guess people who are below now, gold one care about is that. Where people ended up as, uh, you know, which rank they ended up getting to. But uh, today we're showing the hidden MMR distribution. So I will put and, that graph up now. Yeah, thank you. So I think like one of the, the key parts is there's a lot of players that have the skill um, of gold one that are not necessarily reaching the uh, gold one just because they're they're playing their X amount of matches and they're saying, hey, I'm, oh, uh, I'm, I'm right. playing through there copper, I'm that. playing through bronze, and this is it, where but... I'm going to go. Um, but they could get to gold one because their head in MMR is there. And again, the, the reason why um, they are there is because we no longer reset skill. Previously in ranked 1.0, we were doing what we called soft resets. Soft resets meant that we were actually bringing the top end of the community into the center of the bell curve and the, the bottom of the community into the, we didn't bring into the exact center. It was basically, a, there was a, um, an algorithm which brought people closer into the center from the top into the bottom. And yep. then what would happen is that the whole community would kind of be shuffled. So champs now all of a sudden are sitting in plat. Uh, with their actual skill value that was shown and their their playing plats because that's how the matchmaking was working and then they would just slowly uh, go back to champs. That's why a lot of players would say, oh, I'm going to wait the first few weeks of a new season in ranked 1.0 because they didn't that that shuffle made it the matchmaking really kind of wonky. Some people enjoyed it, some some didn't as much. But what you can see now with that hidden MMR curve is that it is a, it's more of a, a bell curve than say our rank distribution is. Um, and we do have a, a cap on the uh, on how far you can drop. We don't let you drop too, too far, uh, or else you just end up in a really, really, uh, it's tough for you to find a match um, and matchmaking. So we don't let you fall too far, but we do get a lot more granular. So you reset? Uh, into the top end. So we let, you know, the diamonds and the champions and stuff start, start to get into the smaller numbers. Um, and, there, and I did see a question about, like, why is there more champions than in the diamonds? Um, but keep in mind the champions don't have a, an end cap. So there's an entry point where now like you've passed the threshold and now you're in champion, but we, you don't get into champion two or champion three, for example, like the, there's no divisions, uh, in champion, whereas in there are divisions in, in diamonds. Sure. And I think I saw a graph that you guys shared on the siege entails posts that you've been doing. And I think it was like 0 0.8 was in champ. But then if you combined all of the diamond divisions, it was higher than 0 0.8. So if... Yeah, it was, it's yeah, like 2% so, or something, yeah. So it definitely does like fall off. Um, yeah. And I guess when ranked 2.0 first came out, there was a huge influx in champion players. But then I know there that was, after yeah. one or two seasons, that was altered. Um, so have you found that it is now like decreased? Is it similar to the amount of pl people who were champ in 1.0 or is it slightly higher in 2.0? It's yeah, it's like, so essentially there was a new system. It's a, it's a new system that we launched in year seven, season four, and we tried our best to, to balance it. Um, but there's nothing like putting it live. So as soon as we put it live, you know, you have millions of players all playing against each other and, uh, as many simulations as you want to make ahead of time. Was, is there more or less champs like now? Live. Um, so when we did put it live, we ended up with way more champions than we felt comfortable with. Um, in ranked 1.0, we were, we were pretty steady at 0.2% um, of champions. Uh, when we went live at year 7, season 4 with rank 2.0, that we had almost 2% of champions on our, on our first and second season. So both year 7, season 4 and year 8, season 1, there were uh, many more champions. 10 times. Um, which you still see today, like people got their uh, background cards uh, and, and so on, times. so they still show off their solar raid, you know, champions. But uh, now today, the last three seasons, it's been consistent. 0.8% of players are reached so champion. four times. Um, the we're somewhat chance. happy with that number. Um of of getting into uh you know you're you're well into that top one percent um but 0 0.2 percent was like it was we weren't ready to go quite as far as the uh, as ranked 1.0 was but uh 0 0.8 percent is we've been pretty happy with that number lately okay that's awesome and i know that you touched she's on so quiet this conversation about this topic that uh, in ranked 1.0 that it was like reset or soft reset so then it was a like yeah. you had champs in like plat for example so with that in mind will placement games ever return or are they gone for goods 
I think placements, they're gone for good for the moment. The reason why is because they're just not a, a real accurate view of where yeah, skill is. Um, you know, like, uh, say, for example, I come back to the, the game, I play 10 matches and say, hey, I achieved that. And then, you know, that's that's all you did. Now, today, you have to play many more matches to get to that rank and to constantly hold off that rank. So say, for example, you make it to uh, gold on one season. If you want to get to the gold the next season, you once again have to play the matches to get to gold, which means you have to prove, you have to maintain that position. Um, and you have to do that season after season, you know, truly saying that you are gold. And the community changes. You know, if you think about year nine, season one, uh, the community versus year eight, season one, you know, it's one year of difference, but the community is much different. Maybe the meta has changed. So, you know, say ACOGs have come back. So how do you actually, uh, how do you fare against, you know, the new shields and the ACOGs like in year nine, season one? So there is a there is meaning to to each season and how far yeah. you get into each rank because it uh, it does kind of verify your skill. I feel and like not that's... more Much more so than 10 matches does. Okay. And uh. so um. I guess in regards to going back to the champs and there being 0.8% of players are champs, I know that for some people, like, they feel that ranked has lost its competitive side. Are there any plans for the future to bring in either, like, an extra rank for, like, the top 500 people on each platform or something further for the people who really do want to play the competitive side? I appreciate that Siege Cup is something that's coming in, in, in the future. Um but is there anything for ranked as well? So we're not announcing anything today, but we are looking at what we can do for the top of the ladder. Like we see an appetite from players that want something more. Um, and you know, and that we, we, we just feel that the, those players that have made it to champ and they just have that appetite for like, I can go further. You know, a lot of our pros would fall into that bucket, right? They, uh, they, they getting to champion is, uh, is not as difficult for them as it, as it is for some other players. Um, so we, we do see opportunity there to kind of bring in something that's, that's even more than siege cup for the top of the ladder. Um, but the, we don't have anything to announce today. Okay. Well, that is definitely something potentially very exciting in the future. Um, and I am sure that people who are watching this right now, who are the champs who gain like two because they've played so much already, will be excited with even that small snippet. So, um, so one question that is asked a lot, and I've seen it so much on the Siege Intels, is about when players stack together. Yes. So when players stack, whose MMR does it actually match make off? So average. I love this question. <clears throat> and the reason why I love this question is because I think that provides context for uh, a lot of what's happening in rank 2.0 today and how we see uh, improvements coming, especially in the short term. Um, so I'll tell you, I'll lay out exactly how matchmaking works, uh, because I think it's important to understand how matchmaking works in order for us to even talk about how do we improve it. Um, so we actually take the average skill uh, of a squad today. So that means if I'm a champion at 4,500, Let's just say I'm uh, I'm just uh, on the edge of champion there, and I pair up with say someone who's copper or bronze, say at fifteen hundred. What ends up happening in the matchmaking algorithm is we say forty five hundred champ, fifteen hundred um, copper. We add them together, I get six thousand. How many people in the squad? Two divided by two, you end up with a matchmaking rating of three thousand. And then those two people go into the queue and say I have two people at three thousand. Say you have one person. 3,000 is like gold. So you're somebody who's now at the, the top of gold, right on the edge of plat. They would end up getting match made together because they, they're they both in 3,000. Additionally, there's another important part so to it's understand fair how that works. To match make a champ against a gold? Is, um, there is basically an acceptance criteria that we look for. So what happens uh, in, in all of our playlists is that we, we try to get you as close of a match as possible uh, in terms of your skill. But then every 30 seconds, we relax that. A little bit so the longer that you end up waiting in the playlist it'll continue to relax every 30 seconds up to a maximum and for context like our ranked maximum is half of what we allow for standard so we're a lot tighter um, in terms of uh, what we allow for ranked but that's that's really how it works and that's how also you understand like it can be uh, abused right like you have a champion that you know says i'm going to pair with you know two three four coppers um they can drive down their their matchmaking rating and then end up in a you know a, a match that. they have no no right to be there <clears throat> matchmake um, off the highest value champion can do a lot of damage to another an opposing team 
And how that was dealt with in the past was by having the the matchmaking uh, rating that said you can't play with your friend if they're more than X uh, skill away from you. So say, for example, I think it was 1,000 or 1,500. And it would say, uh, well, one friend is really good and continued to be good, and now you guys can no longer play together, even though you're having fun every weekend and you're enjoying itself. So what we ended up doing was uh, we broke apart friend groups uh, in order to keep kind of like the competitive integrity. Uh -huh. But that's uh, why I'd love to talk about what we have coming, because I we have an answer for that, which is not just kind of putting that back. Sure. Um, that that skill rating. I, I, we have a lot of uh, improvements that are that are incoming, um, and some what of which have they? not been announced. But I'll be announcing them today. That is very exciting. They're not announced. So I guess today. that kind of goes on to the next topic. You've kind of brought up the issue of boosting already. Um, so obviously, it's really great that you can play with your friends regardless of your rank. But I think there's probably been quite a lot of frustration within the community at the fact that like people will say i am silver and i've i was silver in 1.0 i'm silver in 2.0 why am i playing against a champ and then yeah. like with that champ potentially being also champ in 1.0 um is there a reason why that could be or is that because they have most likely boosted with a copper for example yeah okay well, there's multiple question, reasons but... one is you know maybe i was previously a champion and then i had you know, I haven't played for a little bit, so there's been a little bit of decay in their skill. So therefore, they they uh, they end up. Uh, we don't we don't actually have skill decay, but maybe they just don't play as well um, as they they were in the past, and then they've dropped rank, and then that's why they are in your lobby. Um, but then, of course, there is the boosting aspect. So yes, maybe they paired with other players that you know whether they found on the looking for a group or something like that, where they where they ended up boosting. No skill decay. Um. So means if in you to go AFK boosting, for a month, so you kind of you don't lose your there skill. Might be something in the works for this. Do you guys have a plan to try and help prevent this in the future to stop that one champion going into a lower lobby and being able to basically ace every round because they are the superior player in that situation? So yes, is the short answer. The um, We have three things that are, are coming and I think uh, I'd like to get into the details of all of them. Um, so the first uh, I'll mention is skill initialization, which sounds like it's a, you know, it's for, for onboarding, it's for new players, but actually it affects global matchmaking more than you might expect. So what happens today um, with a player, they go into ranked for say the very first time, they get initialized in the center of the bell curve um, and in the skill bell curve. So what ends up happening is they end up in matches with golds, with platinums and silvers um, when they have no reason uh, to be to be in that those lobbies. Um, so what we're going to be doing is with skill initialization is we're going to be looking at the 50 hours before they played uh, that ranked match, their performance within our hours, other players, which is standard and quick match, and using an algorithm which basically sets a new starting value for those players. Um, and again, it's it ends up affecting who's on your team. So there's a lot of time where you might say. I was playing a lobby and this other, my teammate didn't even seem to know where they were going or I was making callouts. They were not reacting to my callouts and didn't seem to know what the operators were doing. Well, they might just be so relatively new to the game and we initiated them incorrectly. So now with our, the new skill initialization feature, that will actually uh, cause the those players to kind of be less likely but to is be that in out the lobby, or is it not at the higher ranks. That's what they said. Um, the second that I wanted to talk about is dynamic matchmaking. So dynamic matchmaking, it, what it, it actually is is currently today we set all of our matchmaking values in terms of like the who we accept within your match in terms of the skill difference we set one value for everywhere uh in in the world um but what dynamic matchmaking does is it allows us to start doing very focused um, um acceptance criteria for who belongs in your match based on the popularity of that region so let's just say what? Um, you're, you're playing in North America at, you know, 8 p.m. at night, um, you'll end up in a very populated uh, time so that we can be a lot more strict in terms of who you get match made against, meaning that you're less likely to kind of just run into uh, those of further ranks. But then, of course, the alt alternate could be true if you're, you know, playing in a, a low populated region in the middle of the night where there's less people. 
that again that dynamic matchmaking can kind of open that up and make sure that you're not waiting forever for a match you can still play ranked but it just might be a little bit looser with the matchmaking but that dynamicism uh is something that's going to bring us a lot of of control um in terms of not having to say well of course we need to set it for this okay. acceptance criteria because what about these other low populated it regions based off now population. we can be a lot more specific so both of those two that I just talked about, skill and nationalization and dynamic matchmaking, were technically already announced. We announced those at the reveal. Um, what I'd like to talk about on, additionally today is something that we have coming over the next few seasons. It's called Phantom Player. So it's the first time we've talked about this. Um, we've been working with our data scientist teams for a long time, trying to figure out how to ultimately uh, address the the issue of, as you mentioned, boosting or how to play with, uh, you know, why do I, am I in goal and I play with a champion? Um, so what Phantom Player does is it adds uh, a sixth Phantom Player, so not an actual player, but like a, a mathematical value to each team. And that's the value, how much that value will be worth, um, depends on multiple criteria. So one is the number of players that are within that stack, within that squad. Okay. So if, I, if there's like one player playing with like two friends, so you have a squad of three, it'll say, okay, there's three players in the squad, and then it will take their skill and so you know okay. is one a champion is one a copper is one a gold depending on what their their overall skill is that will determine also how much gets added so we have three players of this uh skill i'm going to add this much weight in terms of their overall stack but then there's another value which is the what we call the delta so you have a champion playing with a copper as an example what? that would be a very large delta like the the oh. champion's very far away from the the copper sure so the more that there's a, a delta, the higher value that will also get added to the phantom player. Okay. So basically, uh, the number of people within the stack, it. what over, over ultimately their skill is, and the difference within their skill will add a value to that stack. And that means that if I'm a champion pairing with coppers, say I pair with like three or four coppers to really drive down that average, that will no longer work because you'll end up having multiple people that. in your stack with a total uh, skill and skill disparity that's that's quite high which will boost the amount that will add to your squad and what the weight of that squad is so that way you'll end up playing and getting harder lobbies sure so i so in that situation the phantom player so uh so if, say it was a champ with coppers and you add in like the sick phantom player so if there's like a huge difference in the delta that phantom player would potentially be like diamond for example so then the enemies or the opponents would be like diamond level lobbies so the coppers yeah. couldn't cope for example that's the thing is that the champion right now is is pairing with coppers to bring themselves into an easier lobby right sure. so they can get wins and they can kind of keep stacking their wins against each other by by trying to do that with the phantom player solution it'll mean that they'll actually put them much higher into the the community meaning that if you are you know, in a natural situation so you have a friend that has low skill and a friend that has high skill that low skill player is going to be playing in a higher skilled lobby so delta is 3000 the higher skill will get brought down into the lower skill lobby a little bit okay so that's a really exciting thing that's potentially coming soon i think i understand it's, it's coming in the future um, yeah. And then I, I just had a question about the uh, skill initialization that, um, that was the first good thing they've said today. The of the three things, she said yes. that like with the new players, obviously they don't belong in the center of the battle curve, so they don't belong in like silver or gold. So if their first fifty hours aren't very good, then they'll be put lower in like copper or bronze, for example. So yeah. will that also work if somebody, for example, makes an account to um? to essentially like boost for example and then they absolutely smurfs. yeah smurf smurf accounts and they absolutely like steamroll in standard and they get to level 50 quite quickly will they then be put in like diamond lobbies or like it will place them in the higher higher place so they can't then destroy the lower lobbies it'll depend on their performance but yeah they won't be they'll be now to the right of the bell curve they'll, they'll depending on how far they're how much they perform so yeah they wouldn't they wouldn't necessarily be initialized at gold anymore. Instead, now they they could be initialized at plat and you know potentially even diamond. Okay, cool. That's so like all three of these things combined it sounds really positive and great to combat smurfs and boosting. So this is very hopeful for rank two point yeah. So thank you so much for sharing that with us because I, understand that, I am I personally very excited by this. So I'm looking forward to see how this plays out when it comes in. 
And... Yeah, and thanks for giving, a, giving us an opportunity to talk about it because, <laughs> yeah, it, it, is, it is a complicated subject. Matchmaking is a complicated subject and there's a lot to it. Um, it's not just like, hey, here's your, your number, this number and that number, put them together. It's a little bit more complicated to that than that. Um, but that, you know, the, the conversation like this a lot gives us that outlet to kind of have a more deep conversation about it. Sure. And I guess whilst we like, when we've been talking about the hidden MMR and, and the skill, what actually contributes to that? Like, is it purely based on wins? Is I'll explain that after. KD, or is it based on overall points? Um, and I guess a follow on question from this um, is if KD does affect it or points do affect it, is there ever any plans in the future to give more points for like playing objective more? Because obviously some people have like a 0 0.8 or a 0 0.9 KD, but it doesn't mean they're bad players, but they actually like play objective and support and things like that. Yeah, exactly. So the only thing that goes into skill right now is the win. Okay. The, there's we've looked at a number of different values such as kills and as you mentioned KD and but so win on, loss is the only thing is, that matters. Has proven to be um, a predictor of success. KD, uh, you could have a, uh, like ten KD, and wins they don't care. Is the absolute best way and you have a ninety percent um, win rate. That's all that matters. Two aspects in in the skill. So there you have your actual number, um, your your skill value, but then you also have something called the sigma, which is our confidence rating in terms sigma? of like how much we believe that our number is right. So that's uh that will determine how many points your skill fluctuates. So does it go up? Does it go down based on a win or a loss? Um, so if we say we have uh, a high sigma, which that means that we we don't have a lot of accuracy on you, um, and you you take a win or you take a loss, we'll adjust you by a lot because we'll say, well, okay, well that's exactly how rank one point oh match, worked. Say twenty five hundred and you won, so maybe we should try putting you much higher. Okay. and then see what happens and that's kind of like an automated Bro, this process looks like the ramblings of a crazy person this is all my get, notes from uh, this so learn far about you from your wins and your losses that sigma starts to understand oh maybe you belong here and then we'll start to find your position within the community and you'll get more or less excuse me you'll you'll end up uh losing or winning less because we start to believe that this is roughly where you belong within the community okay so when it comes to like the adjustment of the skill um for example, I find that my, I'll use myself as an example to make it easier to ask the question, I guess. So for the last few seasons, I find that I don't really have like, um, like an MMR or ELO fall off until I hit like diamond five and then it drastically then falls off. So that suggests that I am where I should be. Um, okay. so say I went on a massive losing streak. Would it reflect live in that season that I will then start gaining a lot less, or does it wait till next season? So the skill example, update mid-season or post-season is what she's Emerald asking. Compared to Diamond this season, if that makes sense. Yeah. So every match will adjust both the the skill and your sigma. That's bullshit. Every match. So say for example, there there. With ELO, it has like an, an idea about whether or not it believes you're going to win or lose. So it'll say, let's just say you're in your actual situation. Say you're at Diamond 5 and you're in a match and it says, you know, chances are you're probably going to win this match. Um, that's part of Sigma. Sigma is basically almost There's predicting, no way that's like true. making a, a bet on you and saying, I think you're going to win. And then say, let's just say you lose. So you surprise the Sigma, meaning that it starts to say, well, maybe I'm not as confident as I thought I was. And let's just say you lose again. And then that will continue to happen and your sigma will grow, meaning that the amount of points you could lose on each next loss will also uh, will, will make you lose more. Um, so that and the, what ends up happening is that, yeah, even in that season, let's just say you're, you're diamond five, usually you're diamond five, and you start going on a big losing streak, you might not make it to diamond five or might, might be mar much harder for you to make it to diamond five in that season because it's all in real time. It's happening all the time in every match. That makes sense. Uh, so that Which sounds awful. Me, so now I can be more sad when I lose. Um, <laughs> so I feel like we've kind of already touched on this and have spoken about it a lot, but I know it gets asked a lot. For So for those who may have missed like the first few minutes of the stream, uh, a common question I get asked a lot is, why do I only gain 15 but lose 30 in silver one, for example? Yeah, so in that situation, your, your rank has now passed your skill um so you got you got some some good wins some lucky wins uh lucky you know, you kind of pushed you past where your skill is and then you had a, a loss um then basically what will happen is that your rank will drop more because you're above where your skill value is which is terrible um and so that's 
again, that's not necessarily disheartening. That can also say, continue to improve, try new strategies. It's not disheartening, bro. If you're losing um, way more than your game, that is disheartening. Kind of getting what you, doing what you can to win because chances are the the system believes that you belong in silver at that point. But, sure. Um, uh, apparently, it's so supposed yeah, to update live, so I kind of expected that to be the answer. Um, it's clearly not updating live then. That gets asked a lot as well is about um, solo queue players, and I know this was put in Siege Intel's yesterday. But for those who might not have seen it, why can't solo queue players have their own solo queue? So what we ended up doing was, uh, and again, I said it in the Siege Intel's, like we did think this was a good idea. Um, so we, we looked into it, uh, and tried to see if we could make it work, make the math work. We do have a lot of data scientists on and Ubisoft and we do a lot of predictive yeah. models and how this actually works is we'd say, okay, let's just say we have a solo queue and, uh, our normal queue. Um, uh, what if, uh, 30% of the solo players that happen in our, our normal ranked queue move to the solo queue? What if 50% moved over? What if 70% moved over? And that ends up returning a number of different models on like, what would end up happening um, to the community. So say, for example, in our in our current rank system, it, what would happen if X percent of the solos moved over? And the thing that scared us, uh, and it's not off the table forever, but it is off the table for now, but the... So solo queue is dead. What scared us a lot was what was happening to the matchmaking time of duos, specifically players that are you know, one person and their friend that are playing ranked. Their their matchmaking time went really, really high, like like many, many multiples over where we felt comfortable. Um, and we then we had to try to think of like, okay, we're going to add a solo queue, but it just means that duos are going to have to wait a long time for a match. Um, it just it's going to be hard to to kind of fill them because there's there's less trios than there is duos, and they they basically be looking for a trio uh, or another duo and a solo. But a lot of the solos say are now in the solo queue. Um, we also started playing with the idea about like, well, if there's less solos, then maybe you have to get rid of quads. Like maybe a four stack can't exist anymore. Yes, that's because good. Because we won't be able to serve those players, or we'd maybe we'd have to label it and say, hey, expect a very long wait oh, times. That's perfectly fine. A, get rid of four fours. Stack. Um, quads are terrible. We just kind of kept looking at it and saying, you know what, the time is not right. Let's let's that's keep what working did. on improving the matchmaking. As I, we talked about the phantom player and the other improvements that we have coming um that's that's focus on that let's prioritize that let's see if we can make better matches and then in the future we'll we'll relook at so they'll only do it if they can to, make uh, matchmaking better which... sure that makes sense Doubt it, uh, but we'll, yeah, we'll see. i don't think people would appreciate massive wait time so that makes perfect sense why are quads um, terrible no one wants to be the fifth in, in a four um, stack season they don't four, communicate to you and you're just left on your own pc and terrible console cross play um but yeah. there will also it was announced um, a little while ago that if Zim players get caught doing it three times, they have to play in PC lobbies for 90 days. So yes. will a Zim be put on the PC, like in a, in a rank stack, if there's like four PC players and a Zim gets put into that pool, uh, will those PC players then have to play with that Zim on their team? In yes. year nine season four, when we when we rolled this feature, yes, the, the Zim players will be treated as a PC player and match made. Just what is that question? Player. Okay, cool. If you get put into matchmaking, do you have to play um, with PC players? Like, so that's what? <laughs> they have had, so I think that's <laughs> that's like, the point. Um, oh, wait, I don't know what that was supposed to ask. Questions that I've written down that's been asked from the community. So I know it also had loads of questions come in. So I'm just going to ask some of the questions from chat as well. Um, sure. So one of the questions from chat, and I know we have discussed this. Um, but it's one of the ones um, that's been asked a lot is why can't you show the hidden MMR rating in the game? Yeah, so that it's just that that rating is not going to tell the whole story anymore. Like, say, for example, imagine you're uh, a champion, you see 4,500, but then the squad that you end up matching with will ultimately change that rating so, like so much that it, you'd still end up in a situation where you say, well, why is that person? Like, say we just added it today you'd end up in the exact same situation where you would say, well, why is that champion in my lobby? So I think that that's, that's the the key reason. Like we don't want to just show you a number that doesn't necessarily have as much meaning as we we think it is. 
But uh, I did say earlier in this call, we are looking at ways that we can kind of bring more information into the game. Uh, we will be bringing, um, you know, a, a whole how it works section. Uh, we're going to be working on on career stats, so you can I guess see about you know how you're performing within the season. Versus they don't mention seasons, adding but also explanation ways that we can kind of demonstrate I'm be upset. Uh, that convergence, that idea of you know my rank, my skill, how am I converging between those two things. Um, we have, don't have a good solution for this yet, but I, I think just putting the number back also doesn't send the the, the right message either. Okay, okay but put a cool. fucking yeah, explanation so in the game. Um, when you go to Q ranked, it says, hey, just so you know, skill been, rating. Like, kind of thought of, um, That's all we're asking for. Whilst like, talking about this kind of stuff is I remember like a few a few years ago or maybe even a few seasons ago, there used to be some ranked rotation in between like the rank or map rotation in between the ranked playlists is that something that will ever come back or it will it just be a case of like all maps in ranked always no i don't think i don't think it's what? it's going to be an all maps i think we're looking right now at what's the right number of maps uh for ranked i think we have 16 uh at the moment so every time we add a map like we added layer and then removed stadium and so we're always looking at you know what's what's the right um rotation um, I think there's pros and cons when you start looking at, you know, do we add have less maps? Do we have more maps? Um, and and that ultimately just comes down to the pros and cons. But I don't think we're you're going to see that we stick at 16 forever. Okay, that's uh, that. I, like I learned nothing from that answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so chat also has asked um, why can't players influence their skill properly? Only the outcome of the match currently counts, but why? Why not also accounting for KD, gadget use, strat use, etc.? Just because it's not a, an actual predictor of whether or not you're going to win that match. The the number one thing that we can match make you with is our our belief of whether or not you're going to win that match. Uh, and your past history of your wins and losses is the best way to do that. But what um, affects your we past have history is a your skill. Of different uh, solutions in terms of. Uh, predictions, predictive models uh, that we've put into into a number of different uh, data science simulations where we start saying, well, what if we start to include kills? What if we start to include this? And at the end of the day, nothing has beaten the phantom player solution in terms of uh, giving higher quality matches. So that's why, again, we're going to start with that. I want to see where we end up, but we, we do believe There's that that's no going to be a, a pretty um, impactful have, solution. It. Okay, awesome. Um, and then... In regards to ranked 1.0, um, what was the actual problem with 1.0 slash what, what, why was the decision made to go from ranked 1.0 to ranked 2.0? I know that you said at the beginning ranked 2.0 has been successful in regards to people play it more. Uh, it's gone up by a significant number as well. Um, but yeah, what, why was that decision made in the first place? There was two two main things that we that really stuck out for us with ranked 1.0. Um, one of which that we talked about quite a bit was that you know players would play their 10 placements end up in gold and then just drop for the rest of the season and it wasn't a very rewarding experience um i know some people really liked that experience and maybe they tried to climb and try to climb out of it but for a, a very large portion of our audience maybe less vocal but you know we could see it um those players were not really having a great time uh, within the ranked playlist additionally is that people did think it was uh, a bit of a progression system like they they saw the number they saw the different ranks and they saw okay let me just kind of progress uh and see how far i can get within it the, is a progression system, system though. but it wasn't really how the system be. was working the system was trying to guess your rank as fast as possible um and then try to position you within the uh, community and kind of say this is where you belong um whereas now what we see uh with rank 2.0 is that it is more uh, it matches players expectations a little bit more in terms of it's a progression system where you have a place where you belong within the community and you try to uphold that every single season and by starting at the bottom no, and working because your if, way up if people um, understood it more words, there would be le uh, why would, they wouldn't on, need to do this panel because people it, wouldn't it be confused a, a better feeling rather than just say dropping dropping from gold to bronze it would have no need to explain the um, rank again, system we if people that, were happier the, the performance metrics that we have with how the matchmaking and like 45 percent of players visual aspect of it was versus 35 percent during ranked 1.0 and literally and the biggest question is why is matchmaking not matching my expectations but he says it matches it more uh, than before that, that doesn't make any can, sense we have way more players to match make logic's not there if people were just leaving the playlist after 10 placements then we have less people in the matchmaking queues that we can play uh give you a match with, which means less wait times and and and, and more opportunity for us to try to improve the matchmaking. Um, 
and uh, additionally, we there are benefits to other playlists as well. We see people playing ranked, and then they play quick match, and then they play standard, and then they play, you know, arcade mode game modes. Uh, they tend to be, um, you know, that that um, those players playing more in ranked bleeds into other playlists, uh, and has benefits to other playlists as well. Sure, um, and I guess like I am, I'm re- very grateful that there aren't restrictions, so I can play with my friends. Um, especially because some of them go seasons without playing so in regards to like ranked 1.0 obviously it used to have the soft reset every season and if you didn't play for like so say you were i don't know even champ and then after like not playing for four or five seasons you may come back to the game and then you're gold uh, as it's like yeah. reset enough what happens with rank 2.0 if you don't play for like a year oh yeah current currently Finally, good question um, your skills remain static um, so we're, that's one of the things we haven't talked about, but one, one opportunity that we see is uh, skill decay. Um, it wouldn't be the same as the soft reset. The soft reset was like you literally next two seasons and you went from champion to gold. Like I think that's a little bit uh, extreme. That's um, why priest and cross were in diamond decay depends on after not playing for four skill. years. Like I could see it does uh, not decay at all. decaying differently than champions, you know, for example. So that's an opportunity that we see. Okay. Um, one question chat has um is isn't allowing a squad without elo restrictions more detrimental if the squad is not a full stack for instance diamond could bring three friends who just joined the game and resulting the game being a harsh experience for the remaining player the the question remaining player do you mean like the the diamond uh so i so i think I think what they mean is like if you have somebody stacked with say say I stacked with three people who've never played before, um and um my ranked two point is champ and they're all like copper, and okay. the other person like the solo key player on that te- on our team will it be a harsh experience for them? That solo key player would be still the the rating of the of the squad. So say for example the. Yeah, it's a diamond player with three coppers. So let's just say Phantom player adds, um, you know, I'm just I'm making this up, like 500 more elo to their team. Don't quote me on the 500. I'm just using it as an example. The it would it would push up that squad and the the ultimately the matchmaking uh, rating of that squad. But then the solo queue player would still be matched based on their current rating. So that solo queue player would should be able to handle that squad that. Uh, that difficulty that matchmaking criteria sure so they'll be like the phantom player level so in theory there'd be like right, two exactly. diamonds against what i assume would be the equivalent of two diamonds and three coppers on the enemy team but it wouldn't just be like a low level team no 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 it wouldn't okay phantom yeah. player addresses um the differences that happen i feel in like the, MMR the issue is the question was asking about the squad. current system and he's that's answering the, it in the their new of system that's so not out yet players would remain untouched Okay, that's good to know. So the answer doesn't mean anything because we were asking about right now. He said Phantom Player's not out yet. Um, right? So I guess we we kind of we've kind of touched on this point. Um, but one question that's been asked a lot is why are we getting less elo from winning at a certain point? Doesn't it prevent you from leveling up? And how do you raise your hidden skill level? Yeah. So I think that that ultimately is winning matches that. We expect you to to lose. Uh, that will be the honest answer. Is that um, so? If your like your your skill is changing every single match. Like even if you only win a little bit because we expected you to win, it's still changing. Um, but let's just say you end up in a match where we think, oh, you're probably going to lose this match just because that's the way that the the criteria worked. Um, and then you win that match. That would be a great way to get a lot of hidden skill. Okay. okay, but um, that's not how it works. That, that makes sense. Because you um, lose more than you gain. So, so you gain the four, and the next game you lose it. Your hidden MMR is not going up. You're just still going way back down. Things. Um, is there an aim to try and get the rank point? So uh, the rank and the skill to kind of reflect each other in the future. Um, as I know that some people feel that if you play enough games, even if you're not great at the games you could still hit champ um i mean i know people who are genuinely what? like hard stuck in bronze like they genuinely can't get out of bronze because their fall off is as soon as they hit like copper one their fall off is then bronze so they struggle to get out of that point um 
but some people do say and i've seen it in the comments that they say that anybody can get to champ um, no that's really not true it's really it's really 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 not true like you're you even mentioned you know the, the player that's getting plus 15 2%. minus 30 right like those are the in silver i mean like the, those are the players that are getting hard stuck and that's that's matching your rank and your skill and kind of saying hey this is where we think you belong prove us otherwise but if you but even if, if you, you prove them otherwise and say you're that silver like no you just you keep won't get the champion the ranking the what is happening which we we've owned up to today is like that there is some boosting happening in the rank 2.0 and that like that is that is true that there is boosting happening but um no no not everybody can get the champion if you play enough you'll you'll get hard stuck as you mentioned sure okay so yeah that's that's also good to know as i feel like from my perspective as well uh knowing that only 0.8 percent of players are in champ i think does prove that obviously not everybody gets to champ like fair enough it's increased yeah, well no one's saying everyone does get it. they're saying everyone can, can get, get it if you play enough of players are champ so yeah and i think like on our first seasons when we when we launched and you know the balancing wasn't as tight as it probably should have been uh but again we tried we tried our best to to balance it ahead of time and there's still people that believe that many people can get into champ and it's just not the case if you look at the from season to season to season uh especially you look at year seven season four year eight season one those two seasons there was a lot of champions compared to what we have today um but we we've gotten it more under control and it's pretty consistent over the last three seasons yeah and i do feel i mean i do feel for me i prefer rank 2.0 in a lot of senses um especially when it comes to like the issue of cheating on both pc and console there was nothing more demotivating than getting into a game against five cheaters and then having to lose like a whole rank basically because i faced cheaters whereas now i know it's still super frustrating um but at least i'm like oh well i'm only gonna lose nine go again kind of thing yeah and we have the demotion shield uh as well you know it's means sometimes you just got that rank that and then you know in ranked 1.0 you lose it immediately on the next match potentially whereas now we kind of give you a little doesn't bit make of any sense get one match protection and say okay well because try again. he says it updates in real time so if you lose that story, match then your hidden mmr is going down bit. sure you lo lose a little bit of elo but your hidden mmr is going down because you lost you know, the that, cheaters motion shields just like account for a little bit of you know quality of life and so it's just a visual you, thing you experience but the season. factually behind the scenes sure. it's still just um, as bad so, sorry i've got so many questions coming in from chat right now so one question that we have is, if not like an individual MMR, why they didn't get me to do the panel? Will there be any plan to show the average guy. MMR at one point of matchmaking? So I guess when you load into the game, it says the average MMR of this game is this. We're actually introducing something in the Siege Cup, and uh, uh, you'll see it when we when we launch it. Um, we're starting to have different tiers of squads, and, and that's the the tournaments that you'll end up in. So you'll you'll start to know. Like, what is my squad's uh, rating? Like, my, my RT rating? It's not as simple as, like, you know, 2,539, for example. But instead, it will kind of say, hey, you're a B squad, or you're a C squad, or you're an A squad. Um, and then that'll ultimately determine the, the tournaments that you'll be able to enter. So uh, we like that, uh, just because it, it does kind of give you uh, kind of an idea about where you stand within the community as a group, uh, as a squad. And I think it's something that was required for Siege Club. Okay, and since we brought up Siege Cup, this is perfect to, uh, to ask this question. Someone has said that what is the point of having friends being able to play ranked together when the Community Cup is being introduced? That is a competitive environment where friends can play together. Surely otherwise they could just play standards. Yeah, Siege, Siege Cup is it's not going to be on all the time. It, it will be a time-limited tournament that runs... Um, Likely by weekly when we launch, but eventually weekly. What was that question? We just want to, you know, allow players to compete. There's a Siege Cup. The Siege I will Cup, never play ranked but again. But it's not like if like, you want to hop on. I'm, I'm using this as an example. Like on a Tuesday night, and play some ranked with your friends. It's still going to be the go-to place for your competitive Siege. Sure. Fucking Christ, yeah, that bro. That makes sense because, yeah, my understanding is that Siege Cup isn't on all of the time. So that is, uh, that makes complete sense. I'm very excited for Siege Cup. Uh yeah, we are. <laughs> Um, console question. Let's see, have I asked all of these questions? <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Mm. Guys, my whiteboard's basically full. I have written notes about everything, uh, so and I have like no more room so other than down here. You can see we got a lot to talk about after this. Game. Is that something that can come back in the future, or will that ever come back in the future? I didn't hear what she said. 
I think I think yeah, we'll probably be looking at you know what we can do with that. Um, especially as the playlist is understood a little bit better, and also when we feel that our matchmaking is uh, has improved, as we mentioned, we have multiple fixes coming over the next couple seasons. Um, so I, at some point, I think we could look into doing that. Okay, yes, awesome. I didn't hear that. Uh, that is that's good to know because then I I guess. No when, that came, when that does then finish and I don't know you feel like it was like a tough loss or you could see that actually it was like an average game or if you feel like you got destroyed then you'd be like okay fair enough it makes sense um so we have one oh more ranks question. to display at the end um so the okay. last question we have is you. you mentioned the phantom players edition can you sum up all the changes we uh, should expect for rank 2.0 any changes planned in game to better explain the system for example or provide us with more information yeah, so I think there's there's two different things. There's the matchmaking fixes, and then there's the the overall system. Uh, so in terms of the overall system, we are bringing a, a you know how it works uh, section within the game where we're going to be a lot more clear. And in terms of finally, you know, I have in, been saying this for work, how does two your, um, fucking years. Rank work, how what's the relationship? Took them two years to add a text thing stats, saying this is how ranked we're works. At other uh, future ways that we can kind of improve the relationship. Great job, Ubisoft. Skill. Two years. Um, additionally, in terms of matchmaking, we have three uh, major additions coming over the next few seasons. One is skill initialization. So that's taking the, when the player enters into the ranked playlist, the last 50 hours of their gameplay within standard and quick match and initialize Was it them actually based off a, time? a different place in the community rather than a, you know, a standard static position that we do today. Uh, dynamic matchmaking uh, allows that us to be a lot more tight in terms of our uh, what we call acceptance really criteria. Based off so hours, that was a match. How far away is their head in MMR? Um, and that will be different. That will die by dynamic based on how popular a region or a server is. So again, going. I guess like that makes sense. America, if you play ranked at level sixty, uh, at, a, then... at a peak time, we can be a lot tighter in terms of those matches and try to get better matches. Whereas you know, in you know the middle of the night uh, in a low populated region, it will be much more relaxed. Um, and then Phantom Player, what Phantom Player does is it adds a, a sixth player mathematical value um, and it says who's in a squad. So if it says it's a squad of three, there's three players within the squad, what's their MMR and what's the delta of the MMR? So what's the difference in MMR within that squad? And then it takes all of those variables and then mm. provides a new this value is the one good that change added to the matchmaking so far. reading. And so that'll basically uh, bring, you know, the champions away from the copper lobbies. Okay, awesome. So these are like super exciting things coming in the future. And I am very excited for them. I have uh, a lot of hope for Rank 2.0. But I know that this conversation isn't fully over. This is all the time we have for questions in this. But I'm aware that there is a second session coming. Yeah, so we're, we're having a, what we call a fireside chat with a number of different content creators. Uh, we're going to, once again, be able that. to get into the weeds a little bit uh, with content creators but asking their questions. Uh, we offered a lot of information today as well with the season tells. So bad. excited to hear what questions come out uh, of our content creators and what they, uh, what they would like to ask us and how we can help provide a little bit more clarity on Rank 2.0 and what the future is. Awesome. I'll well, explain why Christopher, not in a second. Thank you so much for once your time today. Yeah, thank you, Rolo. I really appreciate the opportunity, and, and thanks for being our host. No, it was my pleasure. I really enjoyed it. So with that, I will bid you all farewell, and I hope you all have a great evening or day. Oh, stream's over. Okay. So uh, to explain, so I did get invited to that fireside chat, um, but... I, I don't want to say what time it's at or what day it's at because I don't know if we're allowed to say that. But it's basically, one, during stream time, and two, the day of the new season. So I was like, I'm and you can't, we're not allowed to stream it or record it. So I was like, I'm not going to cancel stream on the day of a new season to sit in a call and ask, like, one question. Like, that doesn't seem worth it to me. So... I will not be partaking in that fireside chat. Hopefully other creators uh, who aren't on a stream schedule like me will be able to partic participate and actually ask good questions. If they were to change the date and time of when they do it, I would 100% participate, but I am not missing a day one of new season stream to sit in a call for an hour. This is the entire fucking whiteboard filled with notes and questions. We're going to go through as much as we can. I didn't expect to write down this much, so we're probably going to 
go through as much as we can in a short amount of time. Uh, they explained that. They explained some changes. Uh, they said that this is better because of the whatever. And then we, we got basically the wish list stuff. Um, but the changes were very weak. Okay, first thing we're going to talk about. <clears throat> they said, we have more players playing ranked than ever before. The note I want to make of that was that they specifically said it was percentage of the community is playing ranked, not number of players. So that makes me feel like it didn't actually increase the number itself of players. Instead, it's just like he said before it was 30% and now it's 45%. Like, cool, higher percentage playing ranked, but it doesn't mean that there's more players. That was my takeaway from that. So their whole goal was to get more players, and they just said it was a higher percentage, not actual number of players. I did write down this. I, I want to check Rolo's ranked history. I, I'm not trying to call her out, but it was just because she specifically said she used to never play ranked, and now with rank 2.0, she plays a lot of ranked because the system is better. So I'm curious, I just want to see if that's actually true, or if it was a scripted line. I assume this is her? Why does it say TRN? Same level, right? Yeah, 380. Okay, so this is her. Alright, so that actually was true what she said. She used to never play ranked at all, and then once they changed to rank 2.0, she only played ranked, or played a bunch of ranked. So, credit that that wasn't actually a scripted line. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't. Uh, they mentioned that the hidden MMR is not going away anytime soon, which kind of sucks because I feel like majority of people, especially you guys, probably don't like that matchmaking is based off of your hidden MMR. Uh, it really sucks that it is. I'd rather it be my visible MMR. But it's not going away anytime soon. So one thing that was confusing and I mentioned it in a couple of different parts. Here, they said hidden, your hidden MMR is constantly changing. They said it is not based off of season to season. They said it is each match will change your hidden MMR. So here's my issue. If let's say they gave the example of you get to silver two and suddenly you're losing 16 MMR per match per loss or you're gaining four. And they're like, well, the system thinks that you're already above the rank you should be. It thinks you should be silver three but you're in silver two. So if I win a game and I gain four MMR, why is my skill, my hidden skill, not going up? He says it changes every single game, but clearly it doesn't, because if it did, I would get, you know, even amounts of MMR in silver two, but instead it's still just like, no, you belong in silver three, and it's trying so hard to pull me back. So that seems like an inconsistency on what he's saying. And then he also mentioned... Down here, which was annoying, he said, if you win a few games above your rank, you either had good games or you got lucky, which makes me feel like the system, if you win in a match that you probably weren't expected to win in, it just assumes you got lucky and doesn't actually increase your hidden MMR. Because they're like, oh, like, oh, you know, he, he, he won a game against gold. It's like, he probably shouldn't have, it's just luck. And they just throw it out the window. That seems dumb. It should never be calculated based off luck, which then ties into the other thing we talked about over here. Win-loss. They said the only thing they calculate when looking at your hidden MMR is your win-loss. KD does not matter. Objective plays does not matter. What you did, communicating, pinging, doing anything, none of that matters. The only thing they look at is win-loss. So as long as you have like a high win-loss, then I guess the system will just give you a higher rank. Because then it's like, oh, you have a win-loss of 1.1? You deserve platinum. That's not how that should work. Which also means that that's why we have people who are in ranks that they don't belong in, because I guess if they get a few lucky wins, um, if it does calculate that, then it's just like, oh, he has a high win-loss. Put him up in diamond. But I also want to know what the win-loss actually means. Like, where do you calculate that, and how do you calculate that? Because... Is it based off of who you played against and then your win-loss in comparison? Or is it based off of just win-loss in general? Because then how do people with negative win rates make it all the way to champ? I just, I don't know. I'm getting confused on what connects to what, and they didn't really do a good job of explaining any of it, in my opinion. The only thing that they did a good job of explaining was the Phantom player, which we'll get into in a minute. They said they're not going to come out with a rank 3.0. It's only going to be 2.0, and they're just going to evolve it 
which kind of bothered me because they were like, oh, we'll change things and add things. But then why did they make it ranked 2.0? Because that's all they did. They just added a few things. And people will be like, well, without rank 2.0, we wouldn't have uh, ranked rewards. We wouldn't have headgears and stuff. But it's like they could have done all that in ranked 1.0. They didn't have to make it 2.0 to do that. So the 3.0, 2.0, stuff like that, none of that matters. That's just all kind of bullshit. Okay, so they also mentioned here, which ties into something later, your skill each season doesn't reset, which seems odd. Basically, so they mentioned, uh, they even used it as an example. They were like, if you someone leaves and then comes back, just because they were gold before doesn't mean they'll be a gold now because the MMR and stuff changes. Or like the, the what's it called, the meta changes. So then, why doesn't your skill reset then? Why would they not have your skill reset if the meta's changing? Instead, they're still matchmaking you as a gold player in this new meta, even though you haven't played in like two years. That seems dumb. Which then feeds into this thing that I mentioned later, which was there's no skill decay. In my opinion, they should add that. If you do not play ranked consistently, you should lose MMR over time. And it should impact your hidden MMR. For example, myself, I'm currently in Emerald 4. I haven't played ranked in almost a month. Because ranked fucking sucks. That's why I don't play. But what they should do is, hey, I was Emerald 4, but I haven't played in a month. Bring me down to Platinum 4. Like, every week, go down like a full rank or something. Do some type of degrading system to make people actually consistently play. Because then we get into the same thing as before, where they said they, reason, one of the reasons they got rid of Ranked 1.0 was because people would play their placements and then never play again. Well, in the new system, people reach the rank they want and then they never play again because there's no reason to keep playing. It's just now... They made the new system like a battle pass where it's just the more time you play, the higher rank you get. And then people are just like, well, I got the rank I want. Now I'm done. So they mentioned at one point, they're talking about champions, that ranked 2.0 did not make it easier to get champion. Yet, in the first season of ranked 2.0, there were 10 times as many champs as there were before. He said, before ranked 2.0, champs made up 0.2% of the total ranked population. After rank 2.0, it went up to 2%, 10 times the amount of uh, champs. And they said, but don't worry, we've contained that. And then now it's 0.8%, which is four times as many champs, which people might think 0.8% is not that much, but I think that's a lot. Champ should be like the top 0.1% at most. Now, to be fair, there is the factor that I believe before rank 2.0, champs were limited to the top 1,000. So there was a hard cap of how many champs there could be. Now there's infinite amount of champs. That just seems dumb. They did mention that placements are gone for good. We will never get placements back. I personally think that they should bring it back because much like how we mentioned how skill doesn't reset ever, I think placements are a good way of making players learn what their skill is in whatever new meta. If you don't play for like two years and you just come back in, the game just puts you right back where you were. You probably shouldn't be there. You should probably have to do placements again to find out where you belong. Personally, I would like a compromise. Ranked 1.0, you have to do placements every single season. What if in the new system, you only do placements if you haven't played in like a year? Hey, you haven't played Siege since 2023? All right, get into placements. There are going to be shitty lobbies that you're going to be very lost in because it's going to be people of all skill calibers, but then placement system will make you play 10 games, chuck you into the rank you belong. Something like that. But then that would also require them to not start you at Copper 5, which I don't think Ubisoft will ever get or back off of. They want Copper 5 to be the starting point no matter what, which is stupid. Um, they also mentioned here that right now they have no plans to add anything higher than Champ. They mentioned that they have noted that people want something more than champ there's a strong desire for something to grind for but they said they are not adding anything i already talked about this but they mentioned how every single match updates your skill which i think is bullshit uh they did mention solo queue is dead they will not add a solo queue playlist into siege so everyone who is hoping for something solo queue related it gone not happening uh, they don't, they said that when they'd made a solo queue playlist, duo queues uh, could not find matches or their wait time was so long. 
So solo queue will never happen, which is garbage. Solo queue should be a thing. And then they mentioned how it can like it affects other stacks. Just do what other games do and say, hey, fuck you. <laughs> We'd prefer matchmaking to be better than to give you a fast match. Which was a concerning thing. If throughout the entire conversation, it seemed like the biggest concern um, that he was having was that people were waiting too long for a match. I feel like, although I don't play many other games at a very high level because I don't play a lot of other competitive games, I feel like other games prioritize even matchmaking over queue times. Siege is just like, no, queue times matter the most out of anything. Because I know, like, League of Legends, if you're in, like, the super high ranks, people wait, like, an hour for a match. Which I know can seem ridiculous, but hey, at least then you got an actual good match versus Siege, where they're just like, fuck it, we want you to be waiting maximum three minutes. Also, I forgot to mention this right at the beginning, but I do want to mention it now. Uh, throughout this whole stream and all those things that we heard, do not give shit to Christopher Budgeon, because I can guarantee you that not a single person on the Siege team wanted to do that call, and he was probably forced into doing it. No one wants to be the face of talking about the shitty system that is ranked 2.0, so it's not his fault. He was probably just the, the one who drew the short straw and was forced into the position. So we're not blaming him, we're blaming Ubisoft as a whole. I basically kept rewriting the same thing about skill over and over again, but here I mentioned skill is static. They mentioned that um, your skill... Which also, this was the confusing part. They kept talking about how your skill rating is static, but also it changes every match. I'm confused as to where the truth and where the lie is. Like, is it static or does it change all the time? We're not really getting an accurate answer. Uh, they mentioned that they might introduce, or they will be introducing tier ratings in the future, which basically, it looks at your squad as a whole and just gives you a tier. So you might be A tier, B tier, C tier, something like that. We're going to talk about phantom players, and I'm going to give you guys numbers and examples so you can understand how it works. So phantom players, basically this is their way of trying to combat people who are boosting. So currently, in ranked, if you have a champion queuing with a copper, they will get into gold lobbies, which is not fair. We'll do some numbers. So currently, as it stands, if you are a champion at 4500, and you're queuing with your copper friend who's at 1500, the way the system works is it adds these two numbers together, which you get 6,000, and then it divides it by the number of players in your squad, two, th or two people. So then you get 3,000. So your squad has an average MMR of 3,000, which is, I believe, gold. So that's how the cur current system works. Champ and a copper make one gold, or two golds, okay? Which is unfair. Uh, a champion should not be in a gold level lobby, obviously. So the way the phantom player is going to work is that you'll have the same thing, the champ, plus the copper, but then phantom player adds a second value. So it takes the difference between these two, which would be 3,000, and it also adds that to the equation. So now you have 4,500 plus 1,500 equals 6,000, but then you add 3,000, so now you have 9,000 divided by 2, which equals 4,500. So now, with the new phantom system, a copper, a copper and a champ queuing together will now queue at champ level. So if you're ever in a duo stack, basically it'll always go with the highest ranked player, which is good. But if you have multiple people, let's just say, for example, you have 4,500 champ with a gold, we'll throw another gold in there, a silver, or that's bronze, and then a, a copper, okay? So then that is 10,500, 12,000, 14,000. So we have 14,000 is the total MMR of the squad. But then with phantom player, you take the highest player and the lowest player, you get the difference, which is in this case is 3k. So you add that to 14,000, which equals 17,000. Divided by 5, 3,400. So with the new Phantom system, if you have a squad of a champ, two golds, one bronze, and one copper, the average MMR will now be like gold one, 3,400. Okay? 
if you do not have uh, the phantom thing, then the MMR of the squad would be 2,800. So now the average MMR of the squad with new phantom player has gone up 600. It would be 2,800 without phantom, 3,400 with phantom. Meaning that it'll be harder for someone like a champ to queue against coppers. Overall, that is a very good change. Something I'm looking forward to. Um, not because I necessarily face it, but just because I always think that matchmaking should be as fair as possible. Fairness matters more than anything. And in the current system, half the matches aren't fair. What's annoying though is I still think while this system is cool in principle, I still think a better solution is just to always queue based off the highest MMR. I don't care if you're in a stack where it's a champ, two golds, uh, a bronze, and a copper. The match should only be champs for the enemy team. This is a way that that doesn't happen, but I think the, that's the only fair way to play. If you, you can play ranked with whoever you want, but if you're a champ, you should only be playing with champs. It doesn't matter if your friends are copper, you should be facing champs all the time. That's how it should work. But a phantom player is a good alternative. Now, let's talk about... Uh, the rest. This is news to me. Every 30 seconds that you're in queue, the matchmaking system relaxes the parameters. So, if you are queuing for a champ level lobby because you have 4500 MMR, 30 seconds in, it's going to be like, uh, let's bring those parameters down a bit. It doesn't have to be just champs. We'll include Diamond 1 now. 30 seconds later, okay, we haven't found the match yet. Let's include Diamond 2s. 30 seconds later, okay, we still haven't found a match. Diamond 3s. So every 30 seconds, matchmaking gets more and more relaxed. So the longer you're in queue, it could go either way. Either the worse the match is going to be for you, or the easier. But it'll never be a more fair match. So yeah, the most fair matches you'll ever get are matches you find within 30 seconds. Because then that means that you are finding people at your exact skill level. Actually, you know what that means then? You should cancel your matchmaking every one minute because you might get a match against harder people if you wait longer than a minute. So resetting your queue actually has a benefit. I see people in chat saying you shouldn't reset it, but remember it goes both ways. If you are gold one and you are matchmaking, two minutes have passed by, you are now looking for people between silver four and platinum two. So you have quite the range of people and you could easily go up against a whole stack of Platinums while your team is gold. Resetting your queue now actually has a benefit to make it easier for one side, not necessarily you though. This is also something new, which I think he said is already in place or is going to be in place. I don't know. It was kind of hard to tell what he was talking about was actually in place and what's not. Um, initialization. So basically... The first time you play, you... He kept saying hours. I'm going to assume he actually meant hours because he said it multiple times. So first time that you play ranked, it's not going to just set you at like gold MMR like it did before. Instead now, it's going to go based off of your 50 hours of gameplay. Look at what your win-loss was in the last 50 hours. Your win-loss. And if it's high, it's going to put you in a plat lobby. If it's low, it's going to put you in a silver lobby to begin with. So now if you make a new account, the very first time you play ranked, you will probably be facing people of your skill level right away. If you made a smurf and you were a champ, you were probably going to be facing champs on your first ranked lobby. If you were a gold and made a smurf account, you're probably going to face golds or silvers. So I don't know if this system is currently in place or if it's coming out. I can't remember but initialization will make it harder for people to smurf. And then he also mentioned dynamic matchmaking. So basically, uh, similar to the every 30 seconds thing, the game looks at your servers and based on how many people are currently playing will give you better or worse matches. So if you are playing on a server where there is less people, if you matchmake on a server where there's a thousand people, the game's gonna be like, okay, it's gonna be hard to find you a match. So we're just gonna loosen the matchmaking as much as we can. But if you're on a more popular server, so in North America, like playing on Central versus playing on East Coast. East Coast is way more popular. If you go to East Coast, you will get more even matches. If you go to Central, you will get worse matches with looser MMR, which could be good for you, because if you go against people who are worse than you, easy win. 
But if you go against people who are better than you, easy loss. I think that basically touches on everything that they talked about. So how it stands. Let's, uh, let's, let's use an example. If your hidden MMR is silver 1, okay? In silver 1, you will gain and lose the same amount of MMR per match, whether you win or lose, okay? So if you win, you gain 10. If you lose, you lose 10, okay? If, say, you lost, or like, let's say before you got to silver 1, you're in silver 3. Since the system thinks that you belong in silver 1, you will gain like 15 and you will lose 8. So the system is trying to push you to the rank you belong, okay? But then let's say you make it, you win enough games, you get up to gold 5. I think a lot of you will have experienced this, where suddenly you are only gaining like 5 MMR per win and you're losing 15 per loss. So now the system is like you belong in silver 1, but you got to gold 5. It's trying to punish you by making you lose three times as much as you win. For every single game that you lose, you have to win three games to make up for it, right? All of you guys have had that happen to you? So if I get to gold 5, why is the system not updating saying you belong in gold 5? Why is it still trying to punish me and bring me back down to silver 1? I think that's because the system doesn't actually update your hidden skill. Because if it did update your hidden skill, then now in gold 5, you would be gaining 10 and losing 10. But that's not how it works. So then how do you ever get the system to agree that you belong in gold 5? I don't know how you do it. He claims that the system will just acknowledge it. I don't think that that's true. The hidden MMR just changes slower than your visible, which then is another issue. If you have to play like 50 games just to go from silver 1 to gold 5, that is a terrible system. He even mentioned in the panel, as an example, granted it's just an example, we shouldn't take it for 100% like truth of what he said, but like that you could go up by two tiers, so from like gold 5 to gold 3 in one season, and then you have to wait for the whole next season to go up two more tiers. Like that just seems like a very long, grindy process for someone who probably is better, because you could actually be, in this situation that we've painted, even though you're in silver 1, you could actually be a plat level player, but even a plat level player is going to lose uh, one in every three matches in gold. So even if you get to gold 5, where you gain 5 and lose 15, even if you're actually like a plat level player, you are eventually going to go back down to silver 1, because no matter how good you are in plat, you're going to lose at least one in every three games on average in gold. Because having a 75% win rate is incredibly hard to do, even if it's in a rank lower than what you are. Personally, how I would review the panel was negatively. I don't think it was a great panel. I think there was a whole lot of nothing said personally, but that is also being said as someone who understands rank 2.0 already. Um, I understand it. I've always been explaining it since day one, how rank 2.0 works and people still don't understand it. So I, the whole point of it was to tell people how it works. The issue I have is just that it seemed very contradictory with stuff he was saying, and it was a whole mess. It also, I'm not going to lie, it did feel pretty scripted. A lot of the questions that were being asked, even the answers to those questions seemed completely, how do I even describe it? Like she would ask him a question, and he would start. It, was, it felt like a political debate. You know when you ask a presidential uh, like election person a question and they just say a whole lot of nothing but then don't actually answer the question that's what it felt like half the shit that was being asked wasn't actually getting answered he would say something like um, what about a, a champ queuing with a copper and they'd be like well this is not something we like but it's something that we're looking at it's like okay but what does that mean like you're not giving me a straightforward answer it just felt like they were What's the term I'm looking for? Like dancing around the actual answer. They weren't giving straight answers. I feel like, I know that that will never change. I am not saying that Ubisoft should answer questions as honestly as possible because they'll never do that. And I understand why they won't because if they were to do that, it would not look good versus them just telling people a whole lot of nothing and hoping that they move on. Personally, panel is kind of an L.
but that's just my opinion. Um, I could partake in the fireside chat and ask other questions, but I, I personally, I feel like one, like I mentioned, even if I were to ask a question, I don't think they would give a straightforward and cohesive answer to it. I feel like it would be a whole lot of nothing. So I don't think it's worth it. And like I mentioned, the panel that they're doing is at a time where I'm going to be streaming the new season. So I am not going to give up streaming the new season just to ask a, one question in a one hour panel. We're not doing that. Also, just to recap for a lot of people, nothing is changing next season in terms of what you can queue for, what you can do, how matchmaking will work other than the phantom matchmaking, which might come next season, but they didn't actually say. Nothing's going to change next season. Don't expect to change. This was just an explanation panel. I was hoping for a little bit more. They announced some changes, some mi minor changes, but very, very little. So expect ranked to be exactly the same next season as it is now.